in the midst of the bullshit, everyone was talking about the moves of the Brooklyn Nets, and I've said it. I was with that crowd. The Brooklyn Nets got the better side of the deal, the draft picks, the shooters. But we can't slight that the 76ers didn't get anything back. And last night, I just want to talk about a game I rarely do and what I'm calling is going to be the East Coast Wars. If you didn't see it, the Sixers faced the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's your boy Step Back going in on what happened and what I see as the team chemistry already in game one. The big, big trophy in this trade was James Harden. And yesterday, he played like a trophy. The guy was 27 points, had 12 assists, utilizing all his ball handling skills. Felt like he was freer, okay? He wasn't inundated by anybody else in the team from a supremacy perspective because Joel Embiid is really the only big-name superstar on his team. But we knew about Tobias Harris. We knew about – I talked about Maxie being a superstar scorer. Clark skin in the flesh, right? He's, he's another level type of score that is Maxi always has been since college. And then some other guys are starting to step up. Isaiah Joe got in the game, started shooting it up. Cork Mox is still there who can stretch the floor. Jordan Yang has been a tremendous pickup for this team. Lo and behold, the power four that can do this. So this team is truly, truly set up for a big win factor. The question mark was around the center position. We're losing Andre Drummond, who was going to be the secondary role, just in case MB, who was injury prone, got a little bit hurt during that playoff run, which I expect him to be in. Willie Colley Stein was picked up, and there's several other options they can look to to solidify that bench center position. Okay. This is what it looked like. Harden and Embiid as the emphasis. Look at Harden here. As the emphasis of the scoring two right, look at this move here. Oh, Jesus. Unbelievable. Drive to the hole, shooters all over the place, and it's making me rethink how fast Brooklyn can catch up to where Philly is already because of the chemistry and the type of players they have. Like in the long run, as everyone said, Brooklyn looks like on top. But remember, Drogic is now picked up. Uh, so that adds another dimension. I do think Brooklyn's on top, guys. I do think they make the Eastern Conference Championship with what they have, okay? But but Philadelphia is nothing to play with. And now we have a, a two-star team or a two-superstar team, not all-star, superstars. That's a little different. That could count for three, a uh, big three in some ways, right? These are two superstars. Stars on one Kobe Shaq. We matter of fact, we haven't seen a duo like this since Kobe Shaq. Let's be straight up honest. Let's be straight up honest. Harden looked spectacular. I'm gonna say it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm dick riding a little bit, dog. I'm sorry. And I'm a man saying that, bro. He looked tremendous, man. I, I can't hate I hate his defense. I hate that he just leaves teams when he wants. I really do hate that. Like he doesn't want, look, look, look. oh Lord! But he, if 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 I, my name is Mikey Stepback, if I if I can't lie to you and tell you this guy's not the king of the stepbacks, boy, I cannot lie to you and say that. Look at that shit! Did you just see that? They were utilizing Paul Millsap. Finally, he getting some burn. Very very interesting team. Remember, Tobias Harris was an all star on a Clipper, so I'm segueing back to that. Harden. And being in an all star, and one, and one guy I think will be one eventually in Terry's Maxi. He, he he would have been a six man all star in a previous life. Okay, he's one. He's that good. Philly has a lot to look up to, a lot to look up for. Now, as we continue on to figure out the next step or situation and some of the X factors, and I talked about Tobias Harris. Maybe putting up 15, 16. Uh, definitely is going to have some open lanes. He's going to be hit. Him and Maxi are going to have tremendous second halves of the year. There's no doubt. Too much, too many eyes on Embiid and Harden. Okay. Um, ben uh, Ben Simmons, it's, it's going to be tough for you, boy. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. If if Ben Simmons can stick to Ben Simmons and not try to do anything more to try to compete on what Harden's doing, because he's not. You're not. You're never going to be that type of scorer. 
But if Ben could give me nearly a triple double a game and be a defen- defensive menace for Brooklyn, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I don't expect 30 point games. I expect games like this 15, 12 rebounds, um, 10 assists, five block shots. That's all Ben needs to do for the Brooklyn Nets. Nothing more. Because no matter how good Embiid, and I know, and I know, I know, I know Harden can drop 50, 55, but you got two guys that can do that. I know Embiid can do it in spurts, but nowhere to the realms of Durant and Irving. Those two going, you're in for a long, long night. It's gonna be nice to see, but you can't. Durant's one of the best scores in history. All right, Irving, Irving can get into his place, and he can be also one of the best scores. And that's what that's what made the Nets so scary, James. I mean, for you to leave that kind of consequence, uh, to to not see it fully put together, and maybe it's because you know there's too many stars on the team. That that's that sometimes happens. Too many too many big heads, and it sucks. Here, Harden is the clear number two. You know, clear number two, no doubt about it. No no questioning who may get the shot at the end of the game. OK, I do question MB, MB's temper. He has it. He's jovial. But he, look at look at his head. Let's see how he got his head down. Two there's, there's an issue. If Harden doesn't play well or makes a mistake, I could see Joel going in. All right. That's just Joel's personality and, and, and why I'm fearful of this tandem, though it looked great last night. Green was the other X factor. I went into a tangent, but uh, Mr. Green looked great last night as well. If he gets going, no offense, you're probably almost looking at an even trade for now because we don't know what the draft picks will be. Green is certainly capable when we saw him on the Spurs. Danny Green, that is. Seth Curry's gone, and if he can fulfill that role, um, there is scary terrain in the NBA, and now we have a couple teams. Let me just go into what I'm calling the Eastern Conference Wars, okay? You got Brooklyn. That's definitely there, okay? Then if everyone, no, no, I hope no one's forgot, Miami Heat don't have Oladipo back yet, okay? If they get Oladipo back with Jimmy Butler, they're a very interesting defensive team, if not one of the scariest defensive teams in the East, okay? So that's an interesting play for me, okay? Let's keep going down through the lineups here, and then Another part of this, Bam out of Bayou, return to Bam out of Bayou form. Okay, that's another, another, another thing that really stands out to me. If he can get bad, that's why Miami's on top. That's a big three. Okay, and then you add in the shooting of Miami. Whew. Now, Philadelphia is there. Yes, sir. Brooklyn, I think, is going to start to crunch, squinch up, and they should beat up Toronto. I'm not sure they catch Boston who has a big duo. We'll get there in a second, all right? Even though this was a strictly Philadelphia issue. Chicago, very nice pieces added. Tristan Thompson, uh, they have a big three as well, all right? But I haven't seen, where's Lonzo Ball? Is the big, I don't think they have enough. They look great, but they don't have enough. Levine is great. Durant and Nogos are two all-stars. One of those two does the damage. Uh, I, I do not think they have enough Lonzo ball consistency is, is really in question um you know I haven't seen him in a while he's been injured but really the guy that no one's talking about on this team is Vujacek can he return to form can he make him a big four and can they develop some of this young talent remember Patrick Williams one of the top draft picks I told you out of Florida State hasn't played really this year I want to see what he can bring to the table. He is outstanding at many positions. Even though he's playing at power four, he's definitely in the ilk of a Tatum Brown. All right? He's that type of he's that type of pronounced player that he can be severely dangerous. And what does he bring to the Bulls? Let me continue down on the East Coast. Actually, this should be a separate video. Milwaukee is there, you know, uh, definitely added some nice pieces. Don't sleep on it. And that really makes that the, the, that's the war zone, man. This is this is the this is the this is the World War Three, okay? Because they got a lot of pieces too. Holiday, okay. Allen's there. They added they added Javon Carter, very nice defensively. A lot of nice Grayson Allen that is. You know Middleton, Otempa Cupo. 
I'm surprised they let go of um, Cousins, but they had uh, Mama Shlavili, who had a good summer league, and, and Brooke Lopez should be coming back. I, I'm giving respect to Milwaukee, but I, I, in my, in my, in my true opinion, unless they're outstanding defensively, which they can be, that's what they're geared to be. They're probably the second best defensive team after Miami. Um, those are my, those are my four teams. Okay, Brooklyn, Miami, Philadelphia. You know, I, I wanted to go with Boston, but you know they didn't do it by a Chicago. Okay, that's one, two, three, Quattro. Okay. And a dark horse, maybe, may out of respect, maybe Milwaukee. Boston just doesn't have it at the point guard position for me to ever put them up there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just being straight up honest with you. It's not D- Derek White acquisition was great, but just not enough meat there for me for Boston to be a contender. Now Tatum and Brown can both go for fifty, a couple games, and this and this is what's scary about this East Coast thing. All right, on every squad. On every squad, I do think I do think Charlotte's gonna make a strong push. I do think they're gonna make a very very strong push. On every squad, including Cleveland, there's some fifty point guys. Every squad, there could be a situation. Don't be surprised where we see an upset where one of these guys, like a Tempa Cooper or a Garland, goes completely off. Tatum, okay. Toronto really don't, don't got like that, but Van Fleet, shout out to my boy. I like his play style, definitely Northeast play style. I love that kid, man. He can do it, right? He he has he has that potential. I just don't think they're. I think they're just a defensive anchor. Toronto, uh, they they're in the, they're in my top three. And then probably the East Coast has the three top defensive teams in Toronto, Milwaukee, and your boys on the Miami Heat. It's very interesting what we're seeing here as the East Coast wars begin. Can Charlotte make a run? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But Philadelphia now definitely is going to move up the rankings. Uh, they're a top four team in the East, and it's going to be a war zone. We out of here. Step back, kids. It's going to be fun, guys. If you're not watching basketball now, I don't know when you, when you are. This is the best time. I'm out of here. Peace.